So this is the scene I'm going to paint. Uh, that's the entrance to the old town of France. And on the left here we've got the Victoire, the Italian restaurant, and on the right, Henry's Bar. That big famous old tree in the middle there. Bit of road where it's going on, which I'll totally ignore. Nice sunny day and nice and warm for the middle of November. Here's my canvas, painting it in oil. And I'm not going to draw it, um, it's not going to be that accurate. I'm just going to, you know, sketch on a few bits and pieces here. working with the light, of course, dark and light, so uh, just put in a few dark. Um, the first thing is to establish is the composition, so I'm just putting in a few dark areas which will give me the volume and the size of those areas that I'm looking at and the position of them and then I can work out from that. So that is that dark tree area in the middle of the two restaurants and the two bars. And then follow the gutter line up to, you know, it defines that side and um, I can see proportionately how it looks. Those windows, of course, have to be in perspective, so, you know, just putting those in as a guideline. Nothing is very serious, obviously, at this stage, and just want to get a feel for how this composition will start to look. And at this stage, it could easily be moved around. Really, um, worried if it's precisely, precisely in proportion or accurate. I'm doing this very, very spontaneously, no measuring at all, just diving in and using intuition and spontaneous judgment to put it all together. And this blue is a bit too violet, so then I'm putting in a warmer blue, mix it with lots of white, perhaps a little bit of ochre or something to warm it through and get that nice deep blue sky that we've got today. Excellent. good to be able to see these shapes as just shapes and not sort of think of them as buildings or sky or trees, just shapes, because then you don't really worry whether you're looking at a negative shape, a negative space, that is the space between two objects, say, or the object itself. You're just filling out spaces and um, much better to have uh, some judgment to have that judgment of being able to just see negative or positive space equally because they have equal importance and if you for example windows and the areas between windows if you only paint the windows if you're only looking at them thinking right here's a window here's a window it's quite easy to end up <clears throat> with not enough space between the windows and the windows become too big so by I mean, you could paint windows just as easily by painting all the space around them. And that is what I'm doing now. Just paint, um, uh, no, not doing windows, but I mean, you just paint all the spaces. Whatever it might be, you're just looking for spaces, dark spaces, light spaces, cool, warm, whatever it might be, red, you know, blue, whatever the space is, you're just looking for it, filling it out, and that defines the composition, the shape of your composition. And there should be a focus in there, somewhere where your eye is going to. And there should be a mood that you're starting to connect to. So, you know, you feel like, you know, that you know what you're trying to pull out of this thing. Because if you just paint aimlessly, like, okay, 
work my way through the buildings and all of that. Then uh, you can't expect the picture to have any feeling. If you want a picture to have feeling, you've got to be feeling something when you paint it. So at this stage, I am really trying to not see detail and not worry about exact proportions and exact detail and exact how many windows and all of that. I'm just trying to feel what am I trying to do with this picture. And as I do that, I just let my I just let the the brush go around. Occasionally, I apply my mind to it and think, okay, but I just work this bit out a bit carefully. But on the whole, I'm just going around, letting it just just happen, so that uh, you know it can just be nice and just a, a feeling sort of picture. something jumps out when you put it on and you don't think it's going to look right obviously you soften it back but I try not to over work you know over um, spend too long judging things because you know you might say oh, I've done that too red or too dark or too light but you don't really know until you see a lot more of the, the picture working together. So it's better to just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And then when it's really, you know, you've got a lot of paint on there and a lot of things going on, then you can look at it and say, oh, hang on a minute, this bit here is far too dark or light or too strong in colour or too soft in colour, you know. Then you can start to judge things. And you've got soft edges and sharp edges and... And then you, you, you sort of fix that, and then you're looking at the mood. Now, there's a lot of people in this picture, which I haven't put in yet, but I've just put a few brush strokes where they are at the bottom here. And I've got to start to at least give the suggestion of some people in there. You know, it's not much, but I've got to, I've got to build that in. The way the... Um, because the mood of this is a busy, busy street. There's cars and people walking by all the time. You cannot stand in front of this scene without feeling that. The energy and life of people and movement. So that's got to come into the picture at some point. Well, I think that's about it for today. So... Um, yeah, I think I'll be back out here to have another look at it tomorrow. So it's the next day. I'm. Uh, it's uh, uh, another beautiful sunny day. Saturday in um, the middle of November in Vance, and I'm back on my painting. <clears throat> and the thing is, I, I I've got to spend a bit of time getting back into it because it's very very important that you get in the same groove when you go back to a painting. It doesn't matter if you spent uh, had a five minute coffee break or in this case overnight um, if you leave a painting and come back you can you can possibly be in a completely different sort of groove a different um, way of thinking and it's very very important to spend time to get back into that make sure you're exactly thinking about it the same way you were so I, I spend time just looking at it <clears throat> and I decided that well, I needed to look at the sky a little and the light, the sunny areas of the stone tower and this the Victoire Hotel on the left. Just so I've softened some of the shadow areas, played those a bit, and I've lightened some of the sunlit areas to and uh, along with cleaning up the sky, it's just poured a little bit more light and power into the sunlight of the picture and into the light of the picture and I think that's what's the most important I mean I want this feeling of uh, people and busyness and all of that 
but I don't want that to become the subject of the picture. That's just uh, secondary. So, yeah, like that, like it is now. That's that's uh, how I want it. But now I've got to look at the people. So I'm putting in uh, people here at the bottom, not actual figures. That's a bit. That would probably be slightly too figurative for what I want. So just shadowy brush strokes that suggest figures going by and uh, a warm brush stroke for maybe some light on her face. Uh, anyway, just keep uh, working with that. This guy doesn't look French, does he? Um, and uh, yeah, as I go around doing that, one or two other things that, um, you know, you've got to be careful, very, very careful not to just start filling in stuff as you see it. I sort of have a rule in my mind before I um, make a brush stroke at this point, it doesn't matter earlier on in the picture, but at this point I sort of have some uh, sort of rule that is. Um, to ask myself, am I just doing that because I've seen it and it's there and it's not yet in my picture, or am I doing it because it's going to actually add something to the picture? And in a way, you've got to sort of think about your picture as not any longer belonging to the scene that you are painting. Uh, it sounds um, contrary to anything else I've previously said on other videos, but in a way you've got to sort of see the picture for its own sake and not let the, at uh, this end part of the picture, not let the uh, scene dictate, the picture must dictate at this point. So in a way you sort of start the picture by <clears throat> taking as much information as you can from the scene and connecting to what you are trying to do with it emotionally and you know, the feeling of it. And then somewhere towards the end of the picture you stop taking information and you re rely totally on that connection. And you don't really even need the picture in front of, uh, the scene in front of you at that point because You've got the information on the uh, painting, and uh, you should be totally connected and understand what you're trying to do. Well, I, you know, I prefer to finish the picture in front of the scene, but you just have to be very, very careful that you don't let the scene overwhelm you with starting to pick out stuff that's irrelevant and I've seen a thousand pictures not only of my own but other people's ruined by just overworking and uh, taking information which is not relevant to what you're trying to do. Anyway here's my finished uh, painting. Um, uh, it's very very, I mean it's always difficult to know if you've finished at the end like here but uh, it's very very unlikely I'll do any more to this.